Okay, friends, so it's time now for us to march on in geometry with a look at transformations. We want to take a look at those functions that map the plane to itself. We want a one-to-one -one function, an on-to function. We want a bijection from the plane to the plane. Every point in the plane gets mapped to some point in the plane. And we look in these next few lessons at what happens to figures after a transformation is done to that figure. The kind of trans excuse me, the kind of transformation that we really want to focus on is the isometry. An isometry is a transformation that preserves distance. A transformation is an isometry that preserves distance. That is to say, if you have an isometry from the plane to the plane, and A and B are points in the plane, whatever distance there is between A and B, well, that's the same distance from the image of A to the image of B. If A and B are four units apart, then the image of A and the image of B are four units apart. That's the way that goes. Uh, for convenience sake, we let A prime represent the image of A and B prime represent the image of B. So we could rewrite this as AB is equal to A prime B prime. The most obvious isometry is the identity function, the one where everybody maps to himself or herself or itself. Everything maps to itself. Clearly an isometry because A and B were some distance apart and since they didn't move, they are that same distance apart. Having said that, the isometry with which most of you are painfully familiar is reflection in a line. So I have some line L, I have some points on you know, in the plane, I reflect that point in line L, and I end up over here at P prime. Now, how do I know that I have ended there at P prime? How do I know that that's what P prime is? Well, we define reflection in the following way. Um, if P is on the line, it stays on the line. That's rel relatively obvious. So if P is not on the line, we drop a perpendicular to the line. That perpendicular has some distance to it. We continue that perpendicular. We continue the ray through P in the intersection point with the line. We continue that ray the same distance and call that point P prime. That is how we know that P prime is the reflection of P in line L. That is the isometry with which you are most familiar. That is the isometry with which we play a lot. By the way, not everything is an isometry. You are familiar from your high school work. Take some center O and some point P and you do a dilation Using, uh, using O as the center with some constant of proportionality K. So when I perform a dilation of center O and factor K, well, that's just P prime where the distance from O to P Well, let's try that again. How much will erase? <sighs> Where if I take the distance OP and I multiply by K, I get the distance to P prime and P prime is on ray OP. So 
I draw ray OP. This is some distance. I multiply that distance by k. Ruler postulate says I stick p prime right there. That's a dilation. Dilations change size. They do not preserve distance, and so dilations are not isometries. But isometries are fun for the following reason. A composition of two isometries is an isometry. The inverse of an isometry is an isometry. These are very, very comforting facts for us. They are theorems that can be proved. We think about the function. We think about isometries as functions. If function g preserves distance and function f preserves distance, then mapping one, mapping a point to another through g and then another through f, that also preserves distance. It's a basic intuitive idea that helps us out because what we're going to find out is that every isometry that we can think of in the plane is really a composition of some others, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, likewise, the inverse of an isometry is an isometry. We think about the function going the one way, it preserves distance. So if we think about the function the other way, well, heck, it, deserves, it preserves distance. It doesn't deserve distance, it preserves distance. So that's something nice to think about. Um, there are properties of isometries that matter. Uh, so let me start... dealing with some of the properties of isometries. Um, isometries preserve collinearity. That is to say, if P, Q, and R are collinear, Q is between P and R, if P, Q, and R are collinear, then their images are also collinear. Now that's not too hard to show. Uh, if P, Q, and R are collinear, one is between the other two, let's pretend that this one is between the other two, then I know that P, Q plus QR is PR. That's a neutral result. If Q is between P and R, PQ plus QR is PR. So what do I know about isometries? I know they preserve distance. So the distance between P and Q is the same as the distance between P prime and Q prime. And the distance between Q and R is the same as the distance between Q prime and R prime. And the distance between P and R is the same as the distance between P prime and R prime. Well, what does this mean? If I showed you that in neutral geometry oh so long ago, you would say, ooh, that means that Q is between P and R. And if Q is between P and R, the three points are collinear. Sort of make sense? Sort of makes sense? Gosh, I hope so. Um, likewise, isometries preserve betweenness. And that's a very similar proof. If Q is between P and R, and I do an isometry to these points, then Q prime ends up between P prime and R prime. That is fairly straightforward. It is fairly obvious. Uh, again, it comes from exactly what we just talked about. Isometries preserve segments.
This is one that you will prove when we gather together. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, if I have some segment AB and I perform an isometry, then the entire segment is preserved. That is to say, A goes to A prime, B goes to B prime, and every point in between goes to some point in between. That is to say, the segment AB and the segment A prime, B prime are congruent. With the added bonus that all the points all along here end up all along there. Now, clearly, if I pick some generic point, and that generic point happens to be at A, then obviously true. And if that generic point happens to be at B, then that's obviously true. The trick is, what if the generic point is somewhere in between A and B? You will make the argument when we show up in class that that point should end up on the segments between A prime and B prime. You will make that argument. Then you will extend that argument and you will say, wait a minute, if isometries preserve segments, they also preserve lines. If something was a line before, you perform an isometry on the plane, that's still a line. Uh, isometries preserve rays. If there was a ray before the isometry, it's still a ray after. Angles. And in fact, triangles. If you have a triangle in the plane, and you perform some isometry on the plane, that triangle remains a triangle. Oh, am I going to hit it yet? Okay, good. Isometries preserve circles. Isometries preserve circles. So I take some circle, it's centered at O, it's got a radius of R, this is some circle gamma. So I take some generic point on the curve, on the circle there. What do I know is the distance from O to P? That's R. So the distance between the image of O and the image of P also has to be R. So if I were to draw a circle centered at O prime of radius R, then this point P prime would have to be on the circle. Similarly, if I pick some point over here, there has to have been some point from whence it came. Isometries preserve circles. Because this point, this generic point on gamma, has a distance of r from the origin, it will have a distance of r, its image will have a distance of r from the image of O. And since this point is generic, this point is generic, it is a generic distance of r from this, this point O prime. That is, in fact, what circles do. That is how they are defined. Um, lastly, and somewhat obviously, isometries preserve areas. Whatever the area was before, the area will be after. Now, here's the curious thing. Something you should know about isometries. If I have two triangles, triangle A, B, C, and triangle D, E, F. If I have two triangles and the triangles are congruent, then there is an isometry that maps this one onto this one. And that isometry 
is the composition of either two or three reflections. If I have two congruent triangles, I can get from one to the other by one of it by two or three reflections max. Max. And we can prove that by construction, really. Um, I can prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So we'll take the segment from A to D and find its perpendicular bisector. We can construct the perpendicular bisector of a segment between two points. That's great. And we're going to reflect triangle ABC over the perpendicular bisector. So C ends up somewhere way out here. And A ends up on D. And B ends up somewhere way out here. Something like that. Well, the two triangles don't look congruent just yet. So we do it again. We take segment B prime E, and we take its perpendicular bisector. And we are going to reflect triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, over the perpendicular bisector. So B prime ends up here at E. I suppose that perpendicular bisector should have gone through here, shouldn't it have? Ha 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 ha. Yes, the perpendicular bisector does in fact. How far can I undo? Let's find out. Ooh, that perpendicular bisector goes right through D so that B prime ends up here. Now, C prime is an interesting matter. Either C prime matches up here or C, C double prime ends up over on the other side of DE. It's possible. It's possible. And if that is the case, then we just reflect over DE and we get the job done. So if triangle ABC maps onto triangle DEF after the red reflection and the blue reflection, then we stop Otherwise, C double prime ends up out here, and we just reflect over DE. This is the maybe we do this, maybe we don't. And if we reflect over DE, we're good to go. Two reflections, maybe three. No more than three are necessary. That is a big deal, because isometries come in all sorts, and they really all boil down to two reflections, three reflections. Furthermore, that's a unique uh, isometry that does the job. And that's not a bad thing to know. OK, OK. So what do you have to take from this? You have to take from this that every isometry is two reflections or three reflections, and triangles Congruent triangles map one onto the other by an isometry. You have to know those things. Awesome. And you're coming to class ready to prove some things about segments and lines. Gosh, you're in good shape. Okay.